Come, Nerevar. This time I'll tell you about the scaly, radially symmetric Hortax communis, which is one of the most common predators found in the shrublands and the desert edges. Having a diameter of about 60 centimeters on average, it is a member of the phylum Trichordata. Trichordates outwardly resemble starfish, though their internal skeleton, made of apatite and silicon dioxide, is built with structures that resemble more the bones of vertebrates. The name hails from the fact that each arm is supported by an arrangement which greatly resembles a spine, meaning that the skeleton of a trichordate looks like if someone stitched together three snake tails. At the bottom center of the body lies the mouth, which resembles a three-pronged beak. Opposing it on top of the body is a cloaca that also functions as a breathing orifice. Due to the mineral composition of the skeleton, some suspect that the trichordata are most closely related to the bilaterally symmetrical onycognitha, such as the yerp the hortax is hunting here, but embryological data does not support this. Trichordates do not develop from a bilateral embryo, but instead are radial from the get-go, meaning that their ancestor must have already been a radiate, perhaps more closely related to the molizoa. Atypical for a radially symmetric creature such as brainless starfish or jellyfish, the hortax has a rather complex nervous system. The gut is ringed by a circular brain and each arm possesses a prominent ganglion and a primitive eye at its tip. Obvious ears or nostrils could however not be identified so far, though it is thought the hortax simply feels vibrations through the ground and smells through its mouth, like an argonian. Observing a Hortax simply being idle, it seems each arm has a little mind of its own, not too dissimilar from the tentacles of an octopus. While one arm lies down, seemingly resting, another one might examine something on the ground or probe the sand, while the third stands high on lookout for danger or food. They seem to cyclically switch their shifts. Once direct action is required, however, the central nervous system seems to override any individuality and the three arms act in unison, slithering across the sands with disturbing agility and style. Hortax hunt a variety of prey such as spirifers developing shelubim, onycognaths and smaller trichordate species. The prey is often grasped, sometimes even strangled, with the strong arms and then slowly killed through multiple bites with the beak. During feeding, some astronauts report hearing a purring sound coming from the Hortax, almost like a cat, but this has so far not been recorded. Now as for the prey, the Yerp is a common though quite unusual member of the Onycognatha, about the size of a kangaroo mouse. It is part of the more primitive Archaeocephalia, but still differs dramatically from the typical body plan. The jaw limbs have lost their opposing finger and have instead become horizontal mandibles like in an ant. Furthermore, two more of the post-oral segments have shifted towards the skull and aid now in feeding, while the body is now entirely carried by the hindmost, almost bird-like and incredibly long legs with digitigrade feet. The antennae have also retracted into the skull to form sensory pits. Despite its erect stance, the yerp is an ectotherm, as in the benevolent Martian gravity such a body posture can be maintained even with lower metabolisms. Yerps use their impressive, though crude, jaw apparatus to feed on the bodies and appendages of succulent fractarians, as well as soft sporians. Besides the hortax, it is also hunted by various onycognaths and verticution spirifers. What the prominent bony protrusions on a yerp's back are for is not known. Some form of social display is likely. It has been discovered by complete accident that they seem to have spots only visible in ultraviolet, though it is unknown if yerps can actually see in that part of the spectrum. It also has been proposed that the increased surface area might help the yerp fill up more of the faint Martian sun's heat in the early morning hours, though one would think that an actual sail would be more practical for that purpose. The intelligence of yerps is currently a debated question. The small brain size would suggest Argonian or even insectoid levels of cognition, but in a particular case, a single yerp was once observed looking at itself in the reflective wheel rim of our Mars buggies, deliberately using its mirror image to scratch off a bit of dust behind its left eye. This seems to have been an anomaly, however, as in no subsequent controlled attempt has any yerp ever passed the mirror test or similar cognitive assessments. Thus, the search for intelligence on Mars continues. We better find it soon because there is bugger all down there on Earth.
I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to the coming ones. Make sure to like and subscribe, visit the project's original website, and maybe also check out my Patreon Yunwa. There you may get to view the next videos early.